Hello everybody and welcome back to Amazing Model Cars for the second video of this week because I did not post a video last week so this is payback for that. Today is going to be a very interesting video because today I'm comparing AutoArt to AutoArt Signature. So there are a couple different categories I'll be looking at including price of course, boxing, features and just availability and kind of the cool factor. A brief introduction of the cars will be seen in this video. Representing regular auto art is the auto art Lamborghini Gallardo Super Leggera and representing auto art signature are the Lamborghini Aventador and the Bugatti Veyron Super Sport. So the first thing I'm going to be comparing actually only involves the two Lamborghinis and it is one thing that I have noticed about the two when I compare them to each other. The Lamborghini badge on the Aventador is not a sticker, it is just printed onto the car. However, when you look at the Super Leggera, it is a separate metal part, which is much higher quality and looks way better for a way cheaper price. If you zoom in on it, it just looks perfect. The Lamborghini is very eligible and the bowl looks astounding. However, when you go to the Bugatti, the Bugatti is better than both of them in the fact that the part is very well done and the words are very easily read. So now I'm going to compare headlights. Now, as you can see, the headlights in the Aventador and the Bugatti both look kind of similar. Well, the ones in the Gallardo look different. That is because in the Aventador and the Veyron, both of the main bulbs are actually reflective. Um, if you are in a dark room and there is sunlight coming through the window, it will reflect and make it look like the lights are lighting up. On the Gallardo, it does not do that because it is all plastic. When you move on to the wheels, they're pretty similar. The wheels on the Gallardo are done astounding. Brakes move through the calipers. Says Lamborghini on the caliper. Pretty much the same story with the Aventador. And with the Veyron, it's just as perfect. However, the wheels turn much easier on the Gallardo than any of the other models. The Aventador moves pretty easily, but the Veyron, the back wheels are dragging as you can see. So the Veyron is not made to roll, it is made to look at in a still position. So now we're going to look at the mirrors. And they are all very detailed. Um, I personally like the Aventador mirrors best, but I'm a bit biased. They are all very true to the car, so can't really judge any of them for that. Now let's look at the taillights. On the Gallardo, the taillights are done quite well, with the details all very visible under the plastic. However, on the Gallardo, it is red plastic with clear details. On the Aventador, it is clear plastic with color details, which looks much better in my opinion. Put in the comments down below which of these taillights you think looks better. And the Veyron taillights are red plastic for the brake lights and white for the reverse lights. And you can even see the details underneath the white plastic. The license plates all say the model number. The Gallardo with LP574, the Aventador with LP704, and the Veyron with Super Sport. Now for the little badges on the back of the car, both of the Lamborghinis are identical. Done in the Lamborghini cursive, they both pop out and are a separate metal piece, which just looks super good. The Veyron is the EB for Torre Bugatti, and it pops out even more, looks even more astounding. Before we go back to other parts, i just like to look at the exhaust. The exhaust on the Aventador and the Veyron are chrome-tipped and look very realistic indeed. However, the exhaust on the Gallardo is made of plastic and doesn't look that real. It kind of looks cheap, more like a Maisto than an auto art. All three of these cars have carbon fiber, the Gallardo on the rear wing and the engine bonnet, the Aventador in the engine bay itself, it's covering the engine, and the Veyron is done completely in carbon fiber. And the Gallardo's carbon fiber doesn't look very realistic. The Aventador looks kind of realistic, but the Veyron looks so perfect 
So AutoArt Signature has to win when it comes to the carbon fiber detailing. So now let's look at the trunks. So they all open pretty similarly. I'm using this kind of cool little tool that you can use to open them up. The Gallardo's trunk is quite large for the lid and the trunk itself has hydraulics right there. It does not stay open on its own though. It falls right back shut. As you can see, that was felt. The Aventador's trunk is a bit easier. Um, you just kind of get back here, get around that corner into there. And the Aventador has a very realistic trunk mechanism. They move the trunk not only up, but forwards as well. And this one does stay open by itself, as you can see. And it is felt. And the Veyron's trunk is quite easy to open. You just put your finger right there. And it comes up with the hydraulics. And you guessed it, more felt. So, as you can probably tell, the Signature's trunks stay open on their own well the regular auto arts trunk you can lift it up and it looks pretty good up but you're gonna need something to prop it up because it just falls right back down so on to the engines with the Gyarados you kind of grab the rear wing which I should mention right now build quality isn't very good because the wing just comes off I kinda like it that it comes off but I don't think that's intentional again hydraulic but it does not stay open on its own. So we're actually going to use this little door opener tool thing to prop it up like so. The Aventador's trunk is quite easy to open. You just slide your finger in the little slat. Hydraulics bring it up and forward. And it stays up by itself. And of course, the Veyron, to look at the engine, um, you lift off the entire rear of the car as you can see in the Bugatti Veyron review. And when you look at the engines, the Gallardo, just like in real life, you can't see much. The Aventador, you can see more. The Veyron, you can see everything. All three engines are done with extreme detailing, so I can't give any one more points except for the fact that the Gallardo's engine bonnet does not stay up. So one part of the cool factor that only applies to the auto art signatures are that both of them have working rear spoilers. The Aventador goes up like that for the air brake and slides back for the high speed wing. The Veyron, you don't actually have to lift it up yourself. You go under there, push a little button, and it comes right up and then tilts forward for the air brake as well. So both of the signatures have movable, workable spoilers while the Gallardo has a fixed wing. Now for the interiors. So the Gallardo's door can be quite difficult to open. Even the little door opener tool doesn't really work. You kind of have to pull on the mirror and then the door will gradually open. The interior is done beautifully. I really like the interior of the real Gallardo, so I love the interior on this model. When you move over to the Veyron, the door is very easy to open with just a door handle like a regular car. The interior is very black so it's not quite easy to see everything but again extreme detailing so about as detailed as the Gallardo except for the fact that the Veyron actually has a door latch right here where the Gallardo does not the Gallardo however does still have seat belts like the Veyron and the Aventador now another part of the cool factor which only applies to the Aventador, are of course its cool Lambo doors. Now, on most model cars you would just lift it up. On here you push the door handle forwards to unlatch it, then you pull the door out a bit, and it goes up automatically and holds itself up. And that interior, of course, beautifully detailed Aventador on the door sill. All three of these interiors are just perfect in every way. So now it's time to move on to packaging. And one thing I'd like to really quickly mention is that both of, actually all of the auto art signatures come with two things that regular auto arts don't. 
The Certificate of Authenticities, which is another reason why they're more expensive. They are limited production, 663-1314. Those are both super cool. And they also come with these little booklets that just tell you information about the car. It puts some pictures. So these are also very cool. Now when we move on to the actual packaging, both of the auto arts have these nice closed boxes. The Veyron's is very simple, just Bugatti. The Aventador's is a bit more complicated, but both of them, if you open it, it has the styrofoam in here. that you just kind of pull out and then of course you have screws that you have to deal with and all that of course instructions on how to work the parts of the car and then this is the styrofoam for the Aventador just opens like that and then the Aventador would rest nicely inside there That was not good. Sorry that I did a stare at my ceiling there. The uh, the camera fell over. And then, of course, with the Veyron box, same thing. You do that styrofoam. I'm not going to take that one out because that would just be a waste of time. This video is already longer than most because this is kind of a special comparison video. Now let's look at the regular AutoArt box from AutoArt Performance, which is much more difficult to unbox because... There's a little red thing holding the doors together from the inside with like fishing hooks. So you have to get the door open. Now it looks like the Aventador is in there, just a very tiny one. And then you have to unhook it from the inside of the door. The box is really cheap looking. This plastic part actually fell out. It does have a stand that says the name of the car on there, which is pretty cool. Um, kind of wish Auto Art Signature had that, but oh well. And the box, it's just... It looks more like this Maisto box from the Ferrari 488, which again has a plaque. Um, it looks more like a Maisto box than an auto art box. And it's really cool when boxes have the clear on them so you can see the cars. But at the same time, it really is more. I really like the signatures better because you know the car is protected. It's encased in styrofoam that fits it perfectly and you know that it's not going to get damaged at all. So now we're going to move on to the last category which is of course price. The Gallardo brand new also color selection you can get the Gallardo in gray, orange, green and I think yellow so that's four different colors you can get it in. This was $100 brand new um, moving on to the Aventador this was $212 brand new. You can get it in turquoise, green, red, gray, pink, black, orange, and I think white. I know there are nine colors for this car. Don't know if I said all nine, but there are nine colors for that car, so that is super cool. Many more to select from. And then the Veyron, of course. You have this color scheme. You have this color scheme with the World Record Edition also, where the taillights are just different, and the license plate is the actual license plate. The taillights are all grayed out instead of the red. And then you get the Edition Melvea, the Edition Pure Blanc, um, the dark blue. There are a bunch of different color selections for the Veyron, which are all different editions of it in real life. And this was a $220 brand new model car. So, in conclusion, I think it really depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for perfection and you don't care how much it's going to cost for the perfection, Auto Art Signature is the area for you. If you want a very good model car that has some flaws and is in a pretty reasonable price, Auto Art Performance would definitely be where you want to go. So, with that said, thank you for watching my video on Auto Art performance versus auto art signature please like subscribe and comment and i will see you next week on amazing model cars goodbye everybody